Welcome into another episode of the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm Scott Bernstein, your host. This is another quick hitter episode. We got Benny behind the glass and uh, Jimmy will be joining us later this week on the uh, long form uh, 60 minute edition. Today, I'm going to talk about the uh, Outlaws Motorcycle Club and some recent developments um, in that group. Uh, We've been talking quite a bit about the uh, peace talks that are going on between the Hells Angels and the Outlaws as a means to combat the Pagans Motorcycle Club's Blue Wave, their expansion effort. And in relation to that, there are some, you know, there was, there's been some news. Uh, first off, um, out in Buffalo, the international president of the Outlaws, uh, the number one shot caller in that group, uh, Tommy O, his real name is John Ermine, but, uh, the Outlaws and Tommy O ha- have come up in the uh, court record for an upcoming trial this August for uh, Peter Geraci Jr. and, and Joe Bon Giovanni. Geraci uh, Jr. is the nephew of alleged Buffalo Mafia Don uh, Big Joe Todaro, and Bon Giovanni is a retired DEA agent, um, childhood friend of Geraci that's accused of protecting Mafia back drug operations and accepting about a quarter million dollars in payoffs. Court filings this week speak to the power dynamic uh, between the mafia, the Buffalo mafia, the Magadino crime family, and the outlaws. And in in a court filing I found surprising, they're trying to make, uh, the prosecution is trying to make the claim that Geraci Jr. uh, is a if not high ranking member of organized crime, somebody with status in organized crime. He's never been uh, convicted of of any mob related activities. Right now he's under under indictment in a big case, but within that case, they have witnesses telling them that over the years, Peter Geraci Jr. as owner of Pharaoh Strip Club which was his uh, his business, and and Tommy O is his general manager and head of security at that strip club. Uh, that Peter Geraci has bragged and boasted to employees that he is a made member of the Buffalo Mafia. What's interesting in these court filings is that the prosecution is making the claim that the outlaws, Tommy O, and his guys that work there, there are a number of outlaws in addition to Tommy L that are employed at Pharaoh's strip club are quote unquote subservient to Geraci Jr. Uh, meaning that the outlaws get their final word from Geraci. You could look at least within the club and within the drug and prostitution rackets that are being alleged that, um, Geraci is being accused of of overseeing. Bon Giovanni is being accused of protecting. And then in a separate investigation, uh, the outlaws and Tommy O are being investigated for participating in these drug rackets, supplying the drugs at the club, uh, as well as um, taking part in, in the sex trafficking and prostitution rackets. But it was interesting to see that word subservient uh, that Tommy O and his guys would be subservient to Peter Geraci Jr. Peter Geraci Jr., at least to the naked eye, before this case came about, was a nobody. Yeah, he was the nephew. Uh, I mean, a nobody within the, the realm of organized crime in Western New York. Yeah, he's the nephew of Big Joe Todaro, the grandson of lead pipe Joe Todaro, uh, Big Joe's reputed predecessor. But... Uh, the idea that someone like Tommy O or, or people like the Outlaws would be taking orders from Peter Geraci Jr., at least this is what's being alleged in the court filings, I, I think is, is something that kind of uh, flew under the radar when these court filings hit the docket a week ago. Um, the, the big you know, uh, headline from those 
from those court filings in the Buffalo press was that the, the judge, John Sinatra, U.S. District Court Judge John, John Sinatra, was having to recuse himself, was stepping down from, from the case uh, because of a motion by the defense claiming that there were a couple of uh, potential character witnesses that might cause a conflict of interest with Sinatra. Sinatra recused himself, by, but when he recused himself, mentioned that he felt that this was gamesmanship by the defense to get him off the bench uh, to try to replace him with with a judge that maybe was more favorable uh, towards Geraci Jr. and Bon Giovanni. He claimed that he didn't think these witnesses that uh, would have the the conflict of interest would actually ever testify. They were um, dubbed character witnesses. Geraci Jr.'s attorney and Bon Giovanni's attorney uh, pushed back on that notion. But the word subservient when it comes to the outlaws to someone like Geraci and the Italian Mafia, I think uh, it's a big word. It speaks volumes. And when you talk about kind of a pecking order, especially when you have a what looks like a lower ranked guy uh, in an organized crime group employing someone like a Tommy O, who this isn't hyperbole in terms of organized crime shot callers in the country, if not the world, Tommy O is in the top five right now, probably uh, top 10. And the idea that he would be subservient to someone like Geraci Jr. I think there's a lot to unpack there. And we'll see you know, where that takes us as, as the case gets off and running in uh, August. If there are any charges that eventually hit the outlaws, we mentioned it before, you know, the outlaws are a, a Midwest Traditionally, a Midwest group, um, the uh, seat of power has always been either in Chicago, Detroit, Milwaukee. Uh, it's never been out on the East Coast in the last five years or so. Uh, it's now in Buffalo with Tommy O. Uh, a lot of activity, um, you know, a lot of biker politics uh, percolating right now. The relationships between these groups are very fragile, if not at, you know, on, if not at war. I don't, I don't know what uh, what we can call what's going on with the pagans right now, but they seem to be butting heads with almost every rival group that they encounter in this expansion effort, whether it be the angels, the outlaws. Um, so i just wanted to uh, alert everybody of that language in the court filing that says that the outlaws tommy o take direction from geraci jr it's, it's not saying they take direction from big joe todaro which would make more sense um it's saying they take direction and, and are subservient to peter geraci jr who we have no idea what status he has in in the mafia he's never been convicted of being a, a made member of the mob all we have is witnesses claiming that he's he's bragged of, of of being um, a member of his uh, uncle's crime family. Um, I want to finish off here in our home state here at, at the OG pod, uh, the home state of Michigan. We had some outlaws activity that could be related to um, this ongoing conflict with the pagans and peace talks with the hell's angels, but we don't know for sure. Last week, uh, one of the four outlaws clubhouses here in Michigan was set on fire. Um, luckily the fire didn't spread, but, uh, police in Bay city, Michigan, which is about a hundred miles North of Detroit. And, uh, they have a pretty in integral chapter up there at one point in time in the two thousands, you had the, uh, the whole boss of, of, uh, of the Midwest or part of the Midwest region, uh, for the outlaws was based in Bay City. They called him Black Region Roy, uh, Leroy Frazier. But uh, I believe it was June 15th, there was uh, an incident at the Bay City Outlaws Clubhouse where someone, a 32-year-old man who has not been identified, showed up and threw gasoline on the porch and lit a match. Uh, a fire started for literally like five, six, seven seconds, went out. It caught a like a leaf blower, a, a electric leaf blower was caught on fire, but that was the most damage that was done. The 32-year-old was taken into custody. It's been charged with an arson. We don't know motive. I've heard that it's 
possible that this was just a personal beef that this guy had with a member of the club and it wasn't related to uh you know bigger club politics or anything involving the the pagans or the hell's angels but it's just something to keep an eye out uh bay city outlaws clubhouse was attempted to be set on fire in an arson this week and then out in buffalo we have uh, the court filings that show us that the outlaws in buffalo are, are taking uh direction from the strip club owner peter Dracy jr so uh we'll be keeping tabs for Ben behind the glass and for Jimmy, who will be back for the long form episode. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod out. Mm-hmm.